Well, good evening and welcome to our choral even song on the eve of the great feast of Candlemas. And you'll find that in our service this evening, the words and the readings point towards the great festival tomorrow. So tomorrow at Candlemas, we remember how Mary and Joseph took the young Jesus to the temple to be presented to the Lord and how that event was marked when the old man Simeon and the prophetess Anna came up to him and recognized him as being the Messiah of God. It was also on that day that Mary had to be purified 40 days after the birth of her son. And of course, it's also tomorrow that we bless our candles for the following year. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Let us stand to sing our first hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God, to God, our God. Let us say together, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone the things that we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, 
that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. Save us. Please be seated as the choir sings for us Psalm 8. first reading is taken from the first book of Samuel. Elkanah lay with Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, because I asked the Lord, the Lord for him. When the man Elkanah went up with all his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord, and to fulfill his vow, 
Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, after the boy is weaned, I will take him and present him before the Lord, and he will live there always. Do what seems best to you, Elkanah, her husband said to her. Stay here until you have weaned him, only may the Lord make good his word. So the woman stayed at home and nursed her son until she had weaned him. After he was weaned, she took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. When they had slaughtered the bull, they, she brought the boy to Eli, and she said to him, As surely as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life he shall, he shall be given over to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. This is the word of the Lord.
reading is from the letter to the Hebrews. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one will fall by following their example of disobedience. For the word of the God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from the God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him who, have been, who must give account. Jesus, the great high priest, therefore, since we have a great priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we possess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weak, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace and confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. with righteousness. O Lord, save thy people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. thee favorably to hear the prayers of thy people, that we, who are justly punished for our offenses, may be mercifully delivered by thy goodness, for the glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our <coughs> Savior, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. desires, all good counsels, and all just works to proceed. Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. our anthem, Christ is our cornerstone, by Noel Rawsthorne.
I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to reflect very briefly on our two readings, ask how they foreshadow the great feast of Candlemas tomorrow, and ask how they might apply to us today. So very briefly, in our first reading, we heard the story of Hannah uh, offering her son Samuel to the priest Eli in the temple. So the context is that the Israelites have been led out of the promised land. There have been 400 years of the judges looking after the people of God. And then a lady called Hannah prays for a son. And this son will be a man whom God raises up. He's called Samuel, and he will be the prophetic leader of the people of Israel who will anoint the first king of Israel, King David, and also uh, King Saul, and then King David. And so in this story, we see how a mother praying for a child is used by God in a wonderful way to raise up a great prophet. And that prophet is offered to God in his temple under the priest Eli. In our second reading in the New Testament, taken from the letter to the Hebrews, that is Jewish believers in Jesus at that time who would have been thinking about the Old Testament in particular, the writer of the letter to the Hebrews says that under the new covenant with Jesus through his death and resurrection, we no longer need to trust in just in earthly priests, but we can look to the great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. And that as long as we are faithful, and that is a theme that runs through both passages, as long as we are faithful, God will bless us and honor us, and we can come to that great high priest and ask for forgiveness. Now, as we meditate on the feast tomorrow where Jesus is presented in the temple by his parents, we can see that Hannah in the Old Testament is presenting her son, Samuel, to the temple at that time, to the priest Eli. And in the service tomorrow, we'll be remembering how Jesus was presented in the temple in Jerusalem by his parents. And simil similarly, we are reminded that the boy who's presented in the temple in the great feast of Candlemas tomorrow is the one who's also gonna become the great high priest who dies for us and is raised to life and whom we may come to to ask for forgiveness. So as we meet this afternoon in this place, let us remember that we do have that great high priest to whom we can come. Whatever we've done wrong or failed to do, we can ask for his forgiveness and trust that he will forgive us through his death and resurrection. <coughs> let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone work his great marvels, Send down upon our bishops and curates and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, that they may truly please thee. Pour upon them thy continual dew, thy blessing, and grant this, O Lord, for the honour of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and does promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O God, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Lord, who kept the faith with Simeon and Anna, and show them the infant king, give us grace to put all our trust in your promises, and the patience to wait for their fulfillment through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And finally, Lord Jesus Christ, <coughs> light of the nations and glory of Israel, make your home among us and present us pure and holy as we offer our lives to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand now to <coughs> sing our final hymn. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. <coughs>
fill you with radiance and scatter the darkness from your path. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, gladden your eyes and warm your heart. Christ, the day spring from on high, draw near to guide your feet into the way of peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.